Hey guys, it's Ashley. Um, I can't believe how long it's taken me to record a video. I, I was really trying to do one once a week or at least every other week in the summer and then I totally fell off track. So um, now that Ada's in preschool, I'd like to start recording them more frequently um, because I have some free time. So, um, and I thought a fitting topic for the first video would be how Ada is doing in preschool because you guys have sort of um, been asking about you know, what's her program like, is she adjusting well, um, and all that stuff. So I just dropped her off. Uh, she goes to preschool twice a week, and it's at the end of the week, so it's like a Thursday, Friday, and it's from 9 o'clock till 11.30, so it's just two and a half hours. Uh, we live very close, so I walk her down probably 10 minutes of and um, get her there, drop her off, and come back here and, and do the whole pick up thing that way. And I just like being able to walk. That was one of the benefits of the school that we chose. And um, I guess she never really had a problem adjusting to going to school. I took her there the very first day and um, the way that they do it is the kids sit in a circle. They have little carpet squares and they sit in a circle and they either choose a puzzle or a book uh, when you get there after you drop off all their things in their cubby. And Ada usually chooses a puzzle. There's this little mermaid puzzle that she likes. Uh, so we go over, get the little mermaid puzzle, sit on the carpet, and then she starts doing the puzzle and I kiss her goodbye and I leave. And I think I'm pretty lucky because a lot of kids, even now, um, school started in September and now, you know, we're in late October, uh, a lot of kids are still hesitant. Um, the boy who has a cubby right next to Ada's, uh, he actually sits in his cubby and cowers before school. It's so sad. And um, one of Ada's friends is also having trouble adjusting. Uh, I, I didn't do anything to help her adjust better. She just kind of likes school and she likes to go. So I feel like I don't have any tips um, really on helping your kids adjust. The only thing we do to sort of make things these days special when she goes to school is when she wakes up in the morning I let her watch a special show while she eats breakfast so it's like oh today's preschool we get to watch Mickey Mouse with breakfast today and it kind of just starts the day on an excited tone and I don't know if it's helping or not um, they they do a lot of things with this preschool it's not the kind of preschool where it's very um, like they're learning tons uh, to go to Harvard or something. It's a great program where they play a lot. They do a lot of expressive projects, a lot of art, um, a lot of sensory things. They And I think the most important thing is that they play together. And every day, even throughout the winter, uh, they try to take them outside to play on the little playground that's in this courtyard. Um, and... They also have a snack, which it's been interesting uh, bringing a snack to school because it's so hard to know what to bring because you kind of have to find things that are like nut free and and mostly wheat free and I had a lot of anxiety with my first snack day a couple weeks ago, but I think I have it down to a science now. You can't really go wrong with fruit. Um, and when I pick up Ada from school, I think the weirdest thing that usually happens is that she doesn't want to come home. So she does this fake cry thing where when we pick them up, they're all playing out on the playground and then they have them line up. There's a four-year-old class and a three-year-old class and they have them line up and then you just go get your kid. And so we're, we're all in a line and when it's my turn, I'm like, oh, Ada, hi, how are you? And she's like, eh, eh, eh. I don't want to leave <laughs> and it's like everyone knows she does it every time and I guess that's a good sign that she likes it so much there but it's kind of embarrassing for me uh, and they just passed out a uh, flyer I guess it was last week after the open house about expanding the program to three mornings a week um, and I do think that we are going to do that because it would just be another two and a half hour day um so it would be three two and a half hour slots, which I think is good because in New York State where we live, they start pre-K next year and that's five mornings a week, um, which I think, especially with Ada, she is like 14 days before the school cutoff. So she's actually the youngest kid in her class. And I really debated, um, you know, are we going to send her to school when she can go or are we going to send her to school and like hold her back a little bit? But she really... Uh, seems to like it. She seems to do well. And I think we'll probably just put her in pre-K next year, but that means five days of this sort of program. And then the thing I can't believe is how young um, with kindergarten that they're just not playing as much anymore. Because when we went to kindergarten, 
it was half days when I was little and it was mostly that you played and then you did a lot of the stuff she's doing now and maybe next year and now it's all just bumped up a little bit and I you know there's a lot of things written about how that's really not that beneficial um sorry there's a cat and I thought it sounded like someone opened a door um so that's how school is going it's going really well for her and also for me it's nice to have some time um to get the house under control, some time to write, some time to just be alone. Um, sometimes I exercise when she's at school. I don't have it really structured, um, and maybe I will, um, maybe I will in the future, but right now I just kind of do it by day, like what I need to get that done that day, and, it, and it's been very good. So, um, and I think the other thing I just wanted to mention, because some of you guys may have seen it on Instagram, I have recently come into acquisition of this wonderful baby book um, by Better Homes and Gardens, and it was uh, initially published in 1943. I inherited this book from my grandmother who passed away uh, in September, and I wasn't terribly close with my grandmother. Um, the reasons are totally irrelevant, but... Um, Towards the, towards the more recent years, though, um, when I would see her, we would talk a lot more. And she had five children. My, it was my father's mother. She had five children. And um, so child rearing was really her life. And when she found out that I wanted to stay home, um, she was, like, really proud of me and really um, encouraging uh, that that was a good decision. And so that was really nice because um, I wrote about yesterday how it was difficult for me sometimes to feel like I was doing something important staying home at first and so knowing that someone really saw that as like a, a thing of value was important and um, so to to get this book um, and kind of see I guess my dad said she used this as her her child rearing Bible so she I mean you can tell that the pages are well loved and that she went through here many times um, looking at things and and it's gonna be kind of neat to get a glimpse into the sorts of things that were her life um, when she was raising her kids and just sort of initially off the bat because I'm gonna be sharing excerpts from this because some of the advice is really tried and true throughout the ages and others it's a little like I don't know but right off the bat I thought it was kind of neat because um, Ada's name I mean we didn't pick it because it was particularly unusual but we know it's old-fashioned and um, this name, this book has two name lists in the beginning. One's for boys, one's for girls, and the second name on the list is Ada. And I thought that was really neat um, because, you know, out of a, a few names at the time, Ada was as one of the popular ones. Um, and then I kind of paged through and I found this part about weaning. And it says, um, after a baby is about nine months old, breast milk is no longer adequate for his needs. Somewhere around this time, therefore, your breastfed baby should be weaned. And the same procedure followed by the bottle baby. Uh, and it's just saying that basically now, like, food replaces any nourishment from milk, either breast or formula, which I just think is interesting. So I'll, I'll be um, curious to read more about the process of feeding kids. But that kind of turned me to the back of the book where it was saying some recipes that preschoolers like. And um, I thought, oh, maybe I'll get a few new ideas. And there are some that are good, but then there's others like a rennet custard, um, a fruit gelatin, I, I guess is kind of neat. But then there's like creamed liver, liver casserole, creamed codfish. And it all sounds very nutritious, but I just highly doubt that these are recipes that preschoolers really like. But maybe at the time, they did. Um, so I'll definitely be reading more from this or, or just publishing things. I, I kind of like the pictures as I wait and hope. Um, so yeah. But I'm hoping to do more videos. I'm sorry that this got so incredibly long because um, I know some of you don't like the videos. Those of you who do, nice. Um, I hope that you're having a great Thursday. And um, I'm going to announce the winner of the giveaway in this post too for the prenatal vitamins. Uh, talk to you guys later and thanks for watching.